These posters placard the story of starting price, Australia's greatest racket. The pages of these newspapers disclose facts about the blot in the nation's prosperity, that betting of which Australia is so proud. In filthy, broken-down slum hovels, as well as luxurious lounges of sporting clubs, £40 million in New South Wales alone changes hands in bets from pounds to threepenny pieces every year. Here you see slum homes in which children, given no chance for the future, live in conditions animals would not tolerate. Is it fair to Australians of the future that these horrors must go on? Police work vigilantly in these unhappy areas, but betting has whole streets in its grip. Starting price lives and grows like a cancer, sapping the spending and saving power of the people who need protection from the bloodsuckers who rob them of a few shillings. Police disguising themselves try to raid the bookmakers. They're able perhaps to beat the cockatoo or the vigilant watcher, but starting price lives like a cancer. Parasites of the turf, tipsters, set up officers, selling from pounds to pennies their system like a faker's bottle that never fails. But the big punch who's fitted is good. Radio and telephones combined innocently enough to extend starting price betting. Over the wires, millions of pounds pass in illegal turnover. Bookmakers make a great thing out of it. The falters don't matter to them. What price so-and-so? Yes, all right, ten pounds three ways. So the racket goes on. On the air, racing services are so perfected that Australians don't need to go to the races. This commentator saves thousands of punters their admission charges in every state, every week, almost every day, by means of radio. Not all sections in Australia believe starting prices are evil. It's not illegal to bet. You can buy lottery tickets in several states. Therefore, thousands say, why ban starting price? But starting price has no bowels of compassion. Look, here in these slums, children run bets for their relatives, chasing with sixpences and shillings the street bookmakers. The race goes on on the air. You can hear men who bet know the starters and riders in every race. Proprietary racing clubs out for profits object. They are behind legislation which will smash starting price. But their wail is not so heartrending as that from the streets which you are about to see. Want and degradation follow the track of the starting price bookmaker. He's not concerned there's no food in the house. Battered walls falling to pieces aren't any concern of his. There are scenes like a pre-war Russian novel in some of these suburbs. Not a scrap of food save the remnants of dole or relief work. You know this game. Two up, the national Australian sport. Here it is that the starting price fever develops an even worse temperature, and men will gamble their dole tickets on what's supposed to be a pastime, while the children of forgotten areas look on. Undernourished, without a chance for the future, these children are the real sufferers of the starting price evil. Birds torn by the talons of a thousand vultures. Along these narrow streets, the vultures skim, grabbing money, which keeps even the tradesmen poor in these sad, terrible gambling areas. Houses, houses of hell!